Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today or streaming us later. Our guest today is Ken Wong, who is the president of Lenovo Solutions and Services Group, who we will just call SSG uh, for the remainder of our uh, time together. Uh, so he's been president of this group for about 18 months, uh, and he was seminal in creating this group. So uh, we want to hear more about how that happened. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Ken. Hey, good morning, Carrie. Thanks for having me here. And good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening for all the audiences. Yes. So Ken is in Hong Kong and I am on the East Coast of the U.S. So we have quite the time span, but we're grateful that we have technology to make these things happen these days. So Ken, today I'd really like to focus on SSG and your leadership. My sweet spot focus really is leadership and leadership strategy. So maybe we could just start with, with this new group at Lenovo Solutions and Services. You were the chief strategy officer prior to this role. Uh, why did Lenovo move into, into the services area? Well, I think this is a great question, right? So I think Lenovo to most of the audiences here are well known as one of the biggest uh, PC company on yes. the planet, right? So this is in our core, right? You know, but I think subsequently, I think since then 2005, when we first acquired the PC division from IBM, we actually have done a lot of acquisition subsequently. You know, let me, let me name one of the few, right? The, the second one is actually the acquisition of the x86 server from IBM uh, and also the Motorola smartphone business from Google, right? So okay. with all of these inorganic and organic work, I think this enable us to be, you know, one of the largest uh, provider of devices from pocket to the cloud, which I always talk about, meaning we have all the way from smartphone, PC, tablet to, you know, server and all the way to, you know, high performance computing, right? So everything that you need around hardware. And subsequently, I think both in my role, you know, in the, in the, in the front end, and also when I was running the strategy for the group, right? More and more, we hear a lot of feedback from our customers, right? The CIO, CXOs, right? Is that technology is becoming more complex and complicated, mm. right? And, and, the, and, the, and the pace of changing is, is, you know, the fastest in the past, you know, two to three years, especially when all the things happened around us, right? Right. Just, uh, just when we thought it couldn't get any faster, exactly, it's sped up, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of requirement about, you know, how, how, how can company like Lenovo to, to really help our customers to unleash the full powers of technology, not only confined to hardware or software. So with that, I think we, we found it, you know, important to, you know, at, establish a services and solution business, focusing in putting all these together and create values to our customers. Right. So when I, when I first built the group, I think one of the things that I have been sharing with, you know, our internal employees, uh, our business partner, as well as our customer is that because a lot of people ask, what is services, right? So mm. in my perspective, services is two words, right? One is about intimacy with your customer. you got mm. to really close to your customer to understand their pain point and their requirement. The second one is about creating values, right? So if you put the two things together, intimacy and creating value, in my perspective, is in essence what services is about. Mm. Yes. Well, there's no, no better way to get to know your customer and their needs than trying to implement the products, perhaps, that you've, you've sold them. I can imagine that prior to having this, this group within Lenovo, you had a, a huge partner e ecosystem that did this kind of work. So how do you, you know, how does that work today, right? What is that partnership like with your, your ecosystem of other partners? Yeah. Well, this is another great question. I just came back from Europe. I think this is one of the most popular question when I interact from, you know, customer and especially business partner there. I think to start with, there's a lot of, I would say mis misunderstanding about, okay, when, when someone get into a new business, right? What is the impact to us? Right? I think most of us will tend to think about the negative side of the house. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think. One of the feedback that we heard from our business partner is that, oh, Lenovo, you're getting into a services and solution business. You're moving my cheese, right? You are, you're trying to fight and compete with us. 
you know, I think over time, I think there are a lot of things that we have been, been doing, right? I think one big thing is to look at, you know, how can we find the sweet spot that we can work together, right? For example, I think there are definitely services and solution that our business partner are better than the normal mm-hmm. and vice versa, right? So one of the things that we have done is that we sort of pull out our stack of services and, you know, do something like a beauty contest, right? You know, look at the whole stack to see what are the best of both so that we can put together into a full solution and again, create value to, for, for our customer. So over the past 18 months, this is something that I and my team has been working on and we have really, really good feedback from our business partner. I think the second part is, is, is about, you know, how we do enablement, right? Because services is not as simple as, you know, selling a PC, right? You know, but, but I think what a lot of things that we have been doing, including, for example, one of the things is how can we re our business partner portal, which is a primary mm-hmm. channel for us to interact with our partner? How can we enable the, the business partner portal so that we can, we can educate, we can communicate with, with our business partner to sell more solutions and services as a whole. The end result is that I think, I think the, the, the pipe that we are they are working on is actually we are creating a, be- a bigger pipe, right? So it, it is not about, it's, it's not a zero sum game. It's, not, it's right. about how can we create a bigger market and, you know, create a win-win scenario between us and our business partner. And at the end of the day, I mean, 90% of our business are via business partner, right? So we are one of the most channel friendly uh, company on the planet in our, in our, in our segment. Terrific. I can, I can obviously see how getting into this area would give you more intimacy with your clients, but it may be not as intuitive to me was that it would give you a better understanding of the business of your partners. And so, yes, you can make, make that better for everyone now that you have a deeper understanding. Yeah. So what have you learned in the last 18 months or so? As so you came into this with a certain set of expectations and a vision, what, what confirmed what's been different than you expected? Well, that is a, that is a really a deep question, right? So our group SFG actually formed 18 months ago, mm-hmm. right? And there's a lot of expectation from the company as, you know, we are the group who will actually lead the surface lab transformation from the company, right? Who lead the company to, to become a beyond a PC company on a global basis. So there's a lot of requirement expectation on us. I think one of the things that, that we realized that we might not be able to, especially myself, myself, last time when I was selling or involving in a, in a, in a business, which involved in a complex services and solution, it was like 10 or 15 years ago. Mm. Right. So I realized that, you know, the, you know, the, the, the complexity of the IT technology today is really, really very different from five, 10 years ago. Right. Yes. So, so with that, I think. In my perspective, I, I might be wrong, I might be right, but but I think three things that I can share with you, Karen, and the, and the audiences here. I think for any new business that we are building, I think there are three steps that I will look at. Number one is to build the team. Mm. Right. Second one is to create the strategy. The third one is drive the execution. Now I'll go one by one. Please. Uh, you know, in my early days of my career, I sort of do not understand why it is not vice versa, meaning create a strategy first, mm. find the people to execute the strategy, right? But the more I'm into my career, the more I understand that no one is superman or superwoman, right? No one will know everything that you need to know. So the most important thing is don't be arrogant, don't mm. become complacent and find the right people to build a business for you because they are the subject matter expertise. They will figure out the right strategy and execution for you in the company. Now, as a leader, I think the most important thing is not try to be a boss and manager, right? Yes. It's try to make sure you provide the resources and support, you know, to whoever helping you or the company to drive the new venture. Yeah. And also when there is, for example, in Lenovo, we're not a, We're a big company, we're 80,000 people company. So inevitably, I think new joiners, although they are expert in their subject matters areas, right? But they need help, they need a map 
to navigate within the global. Mm. Right. So this is the thing that I focus on. I'm not trying to debate with my team about metaverse, which I, I, I confess mm -hmm. that I'm not an expert in metaverse. But we have people who join Lenovo who are expert in metaverse, who are expert in hybrid cloud services, who are expert in you know modern workplace solution. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not trying to be the omniscient leader where you have all the answers around the strategy. You're you're involving your putting the team in place first so that the team can be part of co-creating that strategy. And, and I think therefore- I, I, like, the, I like the word co-creating. That's a, yeah. very, very important. Yeah. 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 And therefore owning the strategy and maybe being even more committed to the execution of it. Exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned 80,000 employees for the organization within your group. I know you also have a, a large group and it's a global group. How do you deal with the complexity of running such a large global organization? Hmm. Well, when I first joined the company back in 2005 from IBM, we were a single product company. Right? Mm -hmm. EC is only our offering. Now, today, as I said earlier on, we have offering from pocket to the cloud, from hardware, software, and now services and solutions. So we're definitely a multi-operating system, yes. organization, right? So a few things I think is very important in my perspective. One is about communication, right? Whatever happened in, in the boardroom, in the CEO office, in Ken Wong's office, please do not assume this is you know, well understood by the hmm. 80,000 people across your company. Right. You got to over communicate and then again and again, when you travel to anywhere, one-on-one -on -one round table, things like that. I think communication is extremely important and don't undermine the difficulties in terms of cascading even a simple message, right? Yes. So that is, that is number one. I think number two, diversity is very important, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in a place I was genuinely made and born in Hong Kong, educated in Hong Kong. So there's a lot of mix of East and West here yes. in Hong Kong. But, you know, there are so many things that I do not know in my 26 years of career, right? That I need people's different perspective, right? That is why I think, Karen, go back to your question, right? When I start SSG 18 months ago, there was a lot of struggle with the Ken Wong, in the Ken Wong here is about should I build a team around me, meaning in Asia, closer to me, proximity, right? Easier, time Easy. zone, right? Yeah. Right? Or, or I should have people who are diversified in terms of nationality, location, culture. And then the other day, I picked, I picked the letter, right? Mm. And it came with a cost, Karen, because I formed SSG in the middle of COVID challenges. So mm. about one third of my leadership team, meaning my direct report, I have never met in my life, yeah. right? So that is a challenge, but this, you know, things are still going on. You know, the world is still moving and yes. you need to run the business and deliver the result, right? But I think the cost, or, or let me put it this way, the, the benefit of having a di the diversified team, you know, completely outweighed the cost of not being able to get together frequently as we, as required, right? Yes. So I, I think this is one of the things that I learned, especially when I start SSG, a global business in the middle of a pandemic and all other challenges. Mm. Yeah. Well, that brings to mind the question of what competencies did you look for when you hired your team beyond their geographic diversity? Because you, I mean, clearly they needed functional competency in whatever area it was that you were hiring for. But, but what are the sort of the team skills that you look for when you're, when you're putting a new senior team together like this? Well, there's a lot of debate internally mm -hmm. about, you know, you know, whether we should have people with more ha hardware background, a PC background, a server background, or we should hire people with services native background. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, you know, in my experience, I, I did both, right? I have people who have, you know, both sides of the house, right? I think the one that, if I look at the result the, so far, right, I think that the, the, the one with a better performance, I cannot figure out a pattern about, about, about background, 
but I can figure out a pattern about a personality. Mm. And the personality is a few things. One is they always carry a mirror. They always look into the mirror, who is Ken Wong? Do I look handsome and smart today? If not, what should I do? Right? I think that reflection, be able to see the good and bad of yourself is so important. I think the second one is definitely the ability to, to learn, to unlearn and to relearn, right? Because we're in a technology industry, we're running a technology business and, and the pace of change is just unmatchable by any pace, right? Yes. So you have to have the capability to, to challenge yourselves, challenge the status quo and create something new, right? Say Metroverse, right? I think a lot of people talk about Metroverse is one of the most popular buzzwords in the market yes, now. Right. No one yet, in my perspective, figure out what exactly is Metaverse. I think this is a great thing to me, right? Because that means there's opportunity for us and our company. You know, so those are the other, other, you know, personality or characteristic that I look for when I, when I try to find partners yeah. and help in our business. That's great. Yeah, the the whole Metaverse thing. I mean, not only what is it, but how do we use it, right? What's the yeah, what's the, how do we, what is the business case for it beyond it being sort of fun and interesting because it's a shiny new thing. So thank you for that. I wanted to return for just a moment to the, the business of SSG. You called this in some of the research that I did a secret sauce for Lenovo. In fact, one of the quotes you had, and I think this is so interesting, was that 92% uh, of CIOs would consider new as a service services so that they can focus on innovation, not managing IT. 92%, mm. that is, you know, any anything, 92% of your client base is going into, you want to be there. How have you structured your business so that you can be as a service? And, you know, what is the, what has the uptake been with the, the CIOs and, and your other customers? Hmm. I, I think when, when we build our strategy, right, there's one thing that we look at is that well, I think there are easily, you know, dozens of companies in the market who has been participating in the IT services markets for decades. Yes. Right. And the question that I ask myself and our, and our team is actually, what is our right to play? Right. And how yes. can we deliver additional value? Right. The answer has got to be, there are something new, right? There are something people not yet figure out. Right. So with that, I think, of course, we have our core SSG, which is around our hardware business, right? We provide services around our hardware life cycle, right? So those are the protect part of our business. So when we move to the attack part of our business, I look at new things, right? So for example, as a service, right? As a service for software company is like a norm, right? Mm -hmm. But how we put as a hardware in the as a service formula, solution in the as a service formula, smart city in the as a, as a service formula. This is something that, you know, we are getting into, you know, we, we put all these as a service thing or offering into an umbrella called true scale, truly scalable, right? So this is one thing that we go after coming up from this is new. No one have yet to figure out. The other new thing that we go that we go after is actually all these new technology, right? IoT, Edge, Metaverse mm -hmm. collectively, right? So those are the new thing that need to be defined, need people like us to help people to understand what are the use cases, what are the business benefit that we're able to create for our customer and our community. Sustainability, right? I think this is like mm. the buzzword everywhere but remember Karen like five years ago the kind of heat the kind of uh, interest right regarding uh, sustainability is uncomparable to today every yes. every yeah. board member, every CEO that I met is talking about sustainability so those are the key areas that we are focusing on and becoming part of our strategy coming out from these are new things right and these we have the more right to play compared to the more traditional side of the house. Yeah, I love that phrase, right to play. I will use it with attribution, uh, <laughs> uh, terrific. And of course, sustainability, yeah, was like a buzzword not too few years ago. And and now it is a, it's a core business advantage. 
yeah. uh, I believe. So terrific that you're there. I wanted to end by asking you a more personal question. The, in my consulting business, my tagline is up and to the right, because that is the place on the two by two matrix where we always want to be is in that upper right hand corner. From a leadership standpoint, was there a moment or an event in your career when you knew that you were on the right trajectory to be a successful leader? Well, I, successful leader, I, I, I seldom frame my thinking like this, right? Indeed, I think actually the other way around, right? The more I progress my, in my career, I, I, I see, the more I see, I, I have to learn, right? There's so many things I yes. do not know. For example, right? I resumed my travel, right? And I was trying to figure out, you know, how to spend my 16 hours of flight to New York. Oh, yeah. Right? So I just subscribed a couple of courses on Coursera. Right? Yeah, it's, sure. Yeah. It's so convenient because you just download it on your, on your tab, on your PC, on your phone, and then you can do it wherever, whenever you want on the plane or in the airport. Right. So, so this is more, a, more me, more Ken Wong. I like to learn whenever I'm able to learn something new, I feel excited. Right. Mm. Somehow I will stay late at home at night. Uh, and even with my kids recently, I'm, I'm working with my 16 year old son on, on blockchain, right? Because yeah. I, I do not, I'm a programmer when I, uh, for my undergrad, but I mean, my programming skills is so outdated and my yeah. son just beat me right the right the way. So I'm trying to compete with him now. So I think, you know, this is me. And, and I think the, the, the people who know more about me, I think they always, you know, heard my tagline is, oh, thank you, Karen. I, I have learned something new from you, right? So you made my day. This, mm. this is part of my pet line every time when I'm in meeting. Oh, that's terrific. It. So it sounds like curiosity is a big part of who Ken Wong is. Definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. And I can imagine how fabulous it was for your son to beat you at something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have a degree in it. Yeah. yeah. So it's wonderful. Well, Ken, thank you so much for, for joining today. Thank you, um, for really. Me. Really enjoyed learning more about Anoa's SSG as well as meeting and spending time with you. So thank you again and take good care. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for all our videos. Thank you.